Well, now we're recording. All right. Um, this is this is not a a typical class that you take. You don't attend Ignite. You don't take Ignite. It's like you ever meet people in the military. Anybody who's like a Navy SEAL who's been you know Navy SEAL Hell Week. You don't see people talk about how they attended SEAL Week. They attended Navy uh, Hell Week, right? They went through it. They did it. They did Hell Week. It's like Ignite. You don't take Ignite. You do Ignite. Uh, it's one of our two major classes in Keller Williams that are very much uh, action oriented. Uh, the other one is Bold, which you hear, you're going to hear a lot of people talking about over the next couple of months. They're both they're both classes, but they're not classes you take as a spectator. I mean, you can you can sit in the back of the class and watch Ignite. You can watch Ignite videos. Uh, there's lots of them recorded that you can watch on YouTube. You could do that. That's not the same as doing Ignite, being in Ignite. So I encourage you guys just like jump in with, with both feet and be in Ignite, like do it. If you do this for five weeks, it will launch your career. I promise you the habits they have you do. And, and like everything in life, you can, you can do it or you can do it all in, right? There's going to be assignments and, and there's going to be people who are going to drop in the class and be like, yeah, cool, I'm taking it. But you're, they're not going to do the assignments. There's going to be people who like, th there's going to be lots of homework and, and things to do. And they're not homework because we want you to like do homework so that you can get an A. It's homework. It's things that will launch your career. In fact, I would argue that the homework in this class is far more important than what I say here at the front. Eh, close, right? Um, all right, so some expectations for this class. Uh, active participation, please, please take part. Hey, there she is. Welcome, welcome. We just went around and introduced yourself. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself? I'm Tiffany. Tiffany Dixon, hi. Tiffany Dixon, everybody. Uh, Jackie, Nathan, Loli, and Maureen. Maureen's actually uh, one of our top agents. She's just, she's here helping to contribute to the oh, class. So very cool. I'm always a student. <laughs> um, I love it. So yeah, in this class, let's please try to have active, active participation. Like it is, you know, I'm um, about you guys, but like I was not one that participated a whole lot in school. I was kind of quiet and kept to myself. This is one that's it's super, super cool. I will think you're awesome if you like, you know, be the person raising your hand and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's treat each other with mutual respect, right? So no dumb questions. There's just, there's, it, it's, it's a safe place to ask whatever you need to ask. And that's how you learn, right? And we learn by saying silly things and, and binding our legs, right? Uh, we are, we are going to sometimes be using technology in this class. So if, it is totally cool to bring your laptop. It is totally cool to bring your iPad. In fact, we need to have a talk for a second about, about the, the material for this class. So you feel free to bring your laptop, feel free to bring your iPad, whatever you want. Because um, sometimes there's going to be things that are like interactive and you're going to do things that require like doing. So uh, laptop is cool. Um, obviously, please try not to like be super distracted doing stuff. Hey, what's going on? You here for Ignite? Sir. Welcome. On. What's your name? Hi, Matthew. Matthew. Welcome. I'm Ed. I'm uh, I'm teaching the first couple classes. Uh, this is everybody. We'll, I'm sure you'll meet everybody as we go. Welcome, Matthew. Um, so yeah, technology is cool. Please try not to be too super distracted, right? So, you know, don't be like typing up emails and that kind of stuff. Please, uh, there's going to be breaks. If you need to make a call or something, just step out. Like try to try to respect that everyone's trying to pay attention. However, we you know we are going to allow laptops because that's part of it all, right? Um, Okay, participant guide. This is this is your first big assignment. Is there's a participant guide? It's like, so let me show you where you can find it if you don't know this already. By the way, you should have all received an email from Holland with the with the materials. If you didn't, no problem. Okay, well, let me let me back out here for a second. By the way, no one else trying to get in, right? Okay, cool. Um, if you go to If you go to kwconnect.com, we were just talking about this earlier. So here's kwconnect.com, right? You guys should all have a login. If you, if you can't, there, there's gonna, it's uh, password entry to get in. If you don't know your password or how to get in, talk to Holland or Natalie, they'll take care of you. Um, Cause everybody here, you all, this is, this is part of what you get when you join our office. Um, 
if so there's several things here to note don't worry about this calendar here we have a, a calendar specific for our office under kwsouthbayhub.com mm -hmm. oh yeah i don't even know where that's coming from i don't see that on my screen hold on a second here. oh okay one second There we go. Thank you. Um, okay, so let me share my screen again. A couple of websites you should know about kwsouthbayhub.com. Right? KWSouthBayHub.com is where you'll find, amongst many other things, you'll find our calendar for this office. Anytime you want, go there. It's under career development, I think it is, and you'll see the calendar. KWConnect.com. That one is, this one, we at South Bay are con control, so it's got all of our stuff on there. KWConnect.com is a lot of resources for KW, the parent company. So, uh, for example, so let's go there here for a second, really quick, so I can show you a couple things. Under research, so when you go to KW Connect, you'll see a calendar. Don't worry about that calendar. Training, resources. Oh, it's funny. They, this is new. Ah, huh, that's cool. So sometimes KW, uh, KW, the parent company, teaches classes and stuff. You'll see the, these here under Connect Live Calendar. They're great classes. Feel free to jump in there. If you see something interesting, not, knock yourself out. Um, hey, what's going on? Richard, right? Yeah. Welcome, Richard. Um, so KW, as a, the parent company, teach, teaches uh, classes online. You're welcome to jump in there. That you're, you're welcome to take those. You will also see KWU, stands for Keller Williams University. This is where all of our the actual classes, all the material for them and everything. One thing very cool about KW is it's a very open company, a very transparent. So if you know of a class that you're interested in, you can just jump in here and take a look at all the classes that are offered. And if you like it, just start poking through the material and see if it's cool. And then you can decide if you want to take it or not, right? Um, but what we're talking about today and what we're doing is Ignite. So here's the Ignite stuff on KW Connect. Uh, there's an, a secondary navigation bar here with course info, materials, e-learning, reviews, faculty resources. Materials, this is what we're talking about. There is there's a participant guide to this Ignite series of classes, right? Here it is right here, the student files participant guide. You've got a few options, but you do need to, I, I do highly, highly recommend, it would be kind of impossible not to get through this series without having your participant guide. That wasn't me, right? Okay, cool. As long as it was, I, I don't mind if it was you, as long as it wasn't me. Um, so the participant guide. So you have a few options. One is if you're like super tech savvy and you want to be a rock star, have an iPad like this with a pen, right? And you're like, you can do, be one of these people. That's totally cool. You can do that. Um, there's also like some new thing out. What's it called? Like I saw this thing. People had it at Austin with all the team leaders. People had it out there. What was it like? It's called like notepad. It's like an iPad, but it's thinner. And uh, when you write on it, it's, it feels more like an actual pencil. It's pretty cool. So you could use one of those if you wanted to. Um, you'll even be one step even more cool. Um, there's nothing wrong with old school. That's going to be a recurring theme throughout Ignite. There's nothing wrong with old school. And yeah, well, I'll leave it at that. Um, you can print this out. You have a few options. You can ask Colin to print you out a copy. It's like 50 pages long, but she'll do it for you. And she'll buy, she'll put a staple through it. It's not, it's going to be kind of flimsy. It's not like the best thing, but you could do that. I have one, it may be the wrong copy, but it's 352 pages. Three, is that what it is now? Yeah. All right, hold, wait, hold on. That's crazy. Hold on. The one I downloaded from an email was 352. So I may have had the wrong one. I'm just dying it. Oh my God, this. So, no, I have like one of 350. Oh, these doesn't have page numbers. It has like 13.4 and stuff like that. Um, but that's what it is, like 300. 352, yeah. One of 352. Wow. Okay. So, Holland's not going to, 
Holland's not gonna be able to print that out. And since it's PDF, we can't edit directly on it, right? Yeah, but I'm not. Yeah. I think you can hit edit on yours and it'll let you write it. Okay. Yeah, in preview, it'll let you do uh, in, in, in Mac, or you can download on your iPad and use uh, Acrobat, and it'll. That's what I do. What's that? So that's one way to go about. I, I will let you guys figure out. So if you want to do it on your laptop and do it that way, that's possible too. But you're going to need a participant guide, and you're going to you're going to want that. Uh, Remember when you got your real estate license, there was all those books and then you got them and you thought, oh, these are so important. I want to make sure I've got them in my office or whatever. And then you never touch them again for, for me, it's like 13 years and counting and I think it's ridiculous. Um, this is one that you'll probably refer back to from time to time. So uh, figure out some way of utilizing the participant guide, right? And I know I'm, that's a challenge and that's, that's going to be you to figure out how to figure that out, right? Okay, so am I still sharing this going on? All right, we're good, we're good. Okay. Um, all right. What, why don't we do this? Let, let's all go around. Everyone say, say just how long have you been in real estate? How many deals have you done? Maybe what was before real estate? And by the way, your name too, because like some people came in late. Uh, Maureen, how about <laughs> so, Maureen, Maureen is like, some of you guys came in late. I didn't, didn't hear. Maureen's one of our top agents in the office. She's she's coming here to to help out with this class. Okay, so I I, I was just like you not that long ago, and I'm actually just like you in Colorado because I have a little team here, but I my husband was shut down during COVID. I got a job in Colorado, so I for the heck of it got licensed in Colorado, and um, I go back and forth. I manage my team and I handle the listings here buyer's agents. So I am just like you in Colorado. I am starting completely from scratch. I have absolutely no, absolutely no one. And it's, it's really enlightening. So I'm, I'm making sure I'm actually taking this as a student as well as um, I was asked to teach at night, but I said, I'm going back to Colorado. So I could only be at this class and then I would be a guest speaker if you wanted me. Um, so just remember that we all started just like you. We've all been in that like world of like, oh my God, what do I do next? This is the best class you can start real estate in. This is the best company you can start real estate in. I started with Remax and I followed my, my, my lead agent, the Keller Williams, and it was the best move she made because most realtors out there do it as a hobby, not as a business. And Keller Williams teaches you how to do it as a business. So you guys are in the best place you could possibly be in for your beginning of your career. I'm here to inspire you as well as help you and encourage you. And I know how hard it is to be there. So my goal now in Colorado is to not make the same mistakes I did when I was a brand new agent in New York. So um, my road was like individual agent. Um, and then I got, I basically sold everybody houses that, that knew me. Um, I was a single mom at the time. So Match.com was a very popular place from, you know, because I was looking for my second second round. And um, I would, if I didn't connect with the guy, I sold him a house. <laughs> so, um, but, but basically, you know, it's not about selling houses. It's about building relationships and then utilizing the skills we have to help people buy houses. So um, I just want to encourage you guys, like I said, you're in the right spot. Um, when I first started, if I was not in the classroom, I was with my kids or with a client. So that's, you know, how dedicated I was to make this work. I know this is kind of a, a career where a lot of people transition into. Utilize your past careers. You have a lot of experience with people in past careers and past lives. Utilize them as your sounding board. Like I said, I was school site council president. I was the Cub Scout mom. I was the room mom, I was the art management, I was the soccer coach, I was the church leader. Um, and basically, I just made sure everybody who knew me knew I sold real estate. And that's really a quote from Gary Keller. I just wanna make sure I was not that, hit you over the head, I said real estate, you need to buy more. I was not that person. I was the person that I just want, you know, I built relationships and built trust. And in the background, learned as much as I could, so I could help people make sound decisions 
and the market and, and, and the process. But bottom line is you guys are in this right spot, right time, and it's never too late to start a new career. I love it. Nice breathing. Yeah. Matthew, how do you want to kick it off? Right, so everybody, Matthew Centeno, uh, past life and actually current life. I'm running a restaurant in South Bay, Petalino Kitchen. Oh my gosh, yeah, I love best, it. Best <laughs> homemade coffee <laughs> gap. Please come by and check me out on Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, license in November, signed on here in February, and just kind of get the ball rolling as far as finding an equilibrium between having free time to be here and, you know, running the restaurant. I'm planning on juggling both of those until this picks up some steam. Uh, much like Maureen said, brand spanking you is here learning in the background. As you mentioned, I'm letting everybody know this is my new life, uh, touching into my database and, you know, kind of planting the seed now and I plan on watering it and fostering it as we go along. Cool. Yes. Yeah. I'm a mom with the kids, and I'm a substitute teacher in the kindergarten field. So I'm doing a lot of this and that, and wearing a lot of hats, like uh, Marie was saying. But I am in a transaction right now, so I'm really excited. I'm a listing agent um, in North Florence, so for the you can Thank you. Yeah. So I'm very excited, mm -hmm. and we're in escrow, so just about to close. Yes, and I signed on with Keller Williams um, last October. Kind of got cold feet because I was in it 11 years ago with a different realtor um, as an individual agent, kind of taking the classes that they offered, and it wasn't as, um, it's just different. So um, I was in it for a year, I did two transactions 11 years ago, and um, had my kids, had my babies, and now I want to get back into it. So I'm excited and just excited to be learning. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. Hello, my name is Jackie. I got into real estate. Seems like a little bit before COVID and after COVID, I went to another company. I did not feel the love. And I just felt, to be honest, I felt dumb. I didn't know what to do or how to do it. Um, I met the group of Keller Williams at SoFi Stadium. <laughs> they were amazing. All <laughs> the days. I'm a mom of five. I'm not going to lie. I'm scared of real estate. But coming here, my uh, energy has boosted up. You know, I feel really motivated when I come into this office just to meet Keller Williams people. They're amazing to me. I just feel excited about it. Um, once again, mom, I have a 17 year old about to graduate. She's going to New York College. Wow. And I want to do this, and I feel positive. And I'm here to learn, get educated. Um, just, I'm going to be successful. So I'm here to learn, and I'm happy for all the people that I'm able to meet. You're my favorite. And uh -huh. I'm looking forward to some great stuff happening. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Lily. Uh, Lily. Lily, 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 thank you. Uh, I was born in Mexico City. Um, I moved here when I got married. But the daughter she last name, of course, you are wondering. <laughs> um, divorce, uh, how about? 17 year old daughter, beautiful, but you know, very challenging. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, have to bench on it. So, uh, no, so yeah, I'm keeping my trying to keep my positive uh, and with um, faith that I can do this. Uh, I started my career as a flight attendant back in when I was 18 in Mexico after high school. I flew to Mexico for seven years, one, seven years and one year as a supervisor. It was very good to give me affirmation for customer service and, and for knowing all types of personalities, including pilots, but passenger crazy stories I have. But um, I, I'm here and then I, I survived cancer, breast cancer, 11 years ago. Very grateful to be just alive and healthy. Um, but yeah, I'm nervous, and this is not something like a big challenge. I was going to say, okay, I don't know what I'm putting myself into at my age, but it's again, you know, I'm trying to say, um, no, I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'm staying awesome. healthy, and with a uh, mind of I can do this, and I appreciate. Kevin Williams for sure because they've been so welcoming yeah. and that has made me continue being here. So I'm still trying to finish my studies. So that's 
and it's going slowly. It's not it's okay. It's it's going the way it's supposed to. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Bro. I'm Nathan. Um, I got my real estate license last May. Um, before that, I did property management at Apartment mm. Communities Forever. And then I moved to California. Thought I would be creative, and I opened a salon. And so then COVID happened. And then I knew that I really wanted to be a real estate, so I got my license. Anyway, I did two transactions, and then things kind of just left off, or I don't know what happened. But I'm ready to get back into it. So here I am. Right on, Nathan. Welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> All right. I'll take this off for a minute. My name is Donna Mitchell, and I've been in real estate for over six years. Um, I transferred into Keller about, what, three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And um, I uh, basically, um, I, I, I'm a wife, and I have two adult sons. Uh, one of the sons uh, recently has just passed the bar to become a lawyer. I know. He's with a, a law firm in downtown LA. And the other son um, is studying for his CPA, but he has a disability that came upon him about uh, three years ago. And so, you know, it's a battle. And, um, I truly know the direction that I want to go in in real estate. I really have a passion for commercial. Um, never really did go through the process of going uh, selling residential. I, I did it a few times, but commercial fell into my hands. You know, I have two family members that are running nonprofit homes for homeless people. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already, in the month of February, we placed them, when I say we, I was in work, I, I partnered with a, a girl at Berkshire Hathaway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of like learned on the job mm -hmm. by talking to commercial brokers. And so we closed a deal in February, late February. Uh, we closed another deal, and when I say closed, it was a lease, just a lease, mm -hmm. you know, but it's it's a learning process. And then we just closed another one uh, in the middle of that break. So it's kind of like I've got my feet in the water, mm -hmm. but I, I just don't know what I'm doing. Sure. You know? I, I'm, that's why I reached out to brokers. Yeah. And I also joined the ACR today. Like about a week before, I joined Keller, so it's like, ah! and then I joined the the group coaching with them. So I have a lot of things going on in my life, mm -hmm. and I, I I just want to focus. Cool, so, cool. Thanks, Donna. Thank Richard, how about you? Thanks, Mom. It's Richard. I am a licensed realtor. I came forward in December. Uh, my husband be closing my. Um, with that, just came back here to kind of look at the doors that I've learned and also uh, a lot of new stuff in the night before, so I want to you know, take a hold of that. And I recently did a, uh, a lease transaction to a flip uh, to a special floor. I thought I'd uh, sell or go back home. Awesome. Right on. Welcome. Thanks, everybody. Um, Cool, cool. So thanks everybody for, for let, letting us all get to know each other a little better. Appreciate it. Um, what do I tell you? So here's, this is, uh, oh, how come you're not up to speed? Huh. That's funny. Well, that's this is behind, this is not real time. That's but this is behind. Um, how's that gonna work? All right. Try this again. Oh 
Okay, so this here, this is our, our calendar for Ignite. A few things I want to point out. There's no classes, there's no Ignite classes on Wednesday. And hopefully you guys go to all of them. Uh, it's going to last for five weeks starting today. Uh, it's going to be four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for five weeks, right? There's no classes on Wednesdays, right? Um, today's supposed to be three hours. We're going to get it done in two hours. Um, but here's the bigger thing that I want you to look at. Every day, there's the class, which they call facilitated learning. And then there's two hours of the success system, right? That starts tomorrow. This, the two hours of success system is here in this room from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day before the, the, before the Ignite learning part, which is where you're gonna have an instructor like myself, I'll be here tomorrow, that's, that's where you're gonna have an instructor. The part from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., there's no one here. It's on you. You guys, you have to, and we're going to tell you what to do, how to do it, and all that. But there, you're, it's not going to be monitored. It's going to be you guys. So I, my, my recommendation would be, like, let's pick someone who's going to be here the next day from 9 to 11. Every day, I would select someone new to be the, quote, chairperson for the next facilitated learning session, right? And they can kind of keep everybody on track a little bit. I don't, that's, that's my recommendation. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, Lily. I'm sorry. I just didn't know that it was going to be up from 9 to It's That part is, that part, I, I wouldn't say it's optional. I, you, should, you should do it. It's optional for you to be here in person from 9 to 11. We didn't, we didn't even put it on the calendar for that reason because you could do it from home. You could do it from whatever. I recommend if you can be here from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. that you do it. But if you can't be here, that's, that's totally cool. Can I do it? I mean, yeah. Time. Yeah, totally. So I can I do it after? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's like I said, it's not monitored. You could do it from home. Uh, I would recommend that you, part of Ignite is getting to know all your fellow classmates, right? And all of you guys working together. So that's gonna be something cool that will happen if you come here every morning from nine to 11. I promise you there's only gonna be like a quarter of you guys that'll be here because a lot of people have other, some of the people won't even be able to make it to every class because you have jobs and stuff. It's hard, right? So, you know, try to make it as much as you can. My, which on that note, while we're at it, Tiffany, uh, if you can't make it to a class because you have a job, because you have to make money and, and real estate's not making enough money yet, right? Some of us say hey, that there's a transition that can happen, right? Like Jackie. Uh, in that case, what I would recommend doing is uh, let's, we're going to try to get the classes posted on YouTube as quickly as we can, hopefully that afternoon. So like hopefully today's class would get posted by the end of the business day. So if you can't make it to the class, I would recommend if you can try to watch it that evening and then see if you can get your two hours of facilitated learning. The, the, I mean, the, the success system, which we're going to tell you what that means and all that. It's basically making phone calls, doing some real estate activities. Try to get that done, you know, uh, outside of the class if you can, if you can do it. Right. So I, what I'm saying is I would try to keep pace with the class, even if you can't make every one. Um, right. And then try to make whatever, however many you can. And then uh, try to do two hours a day, whether it's here or somewhere else. Somewhere else. Everybody following? Okay, cool. All right, so that's that. All right, so let's jump in. This course is going to move you through key, four key objectives. E L L T, they call it. Uh, one, we're going to try to make you a real estate expert. We're going to talk about that. That's going to be the first four of the classes. Lead generation, probably the most important thing you will ever do in your lifetime as a real estate agent. We're going to talk a lot about that from the five through nine classes are going to be about that. Lead follow-up is going to be classes 10 through 13. And the transaction part is going to be the last six classes from 14 to 20. By the end of Ignite, you will be on the path to being the real estate expert of choice by number one, creating a robust value proposition for your business. Two, developing a lead generation system with the lead generation model that comes from the best-selling book by co-founder of KW. Oh, I forgot to be on books. Uh, at the break, I'll show them. There, there's three books that, we, that we're going to be using a lot in this, in this class off and on. One is the MREA, uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, right? Red book, uh, MREA, sometimes called the Red Book. That's probably the one that you is most important. We also have a book called Shift, and we have a book called The One Thing. Also good too, but if you're going to start with reading one book, do the MREA book. 
And by the way, the material is kind of dense. At first, you're going to be reading. You're like, like, is any of this even getting in? Like, I don't even know what the hell I'm reading. It's like reading a Greek, uh, you know, something in a foreign language. At first, not, not quite that much, but some of it may pass you by. But just know that it's just just hang in there, and it all starts to kind of make sense. Somebody was saying earlier. I, I forgot which one of you guys are saying that. Uh, you don't feel like plugged in. I think, was it you, Don, who was saying you don't feel plugged in yet? You don't feel like you still kind of feel, uh, yeah, right? I, I will tell you, uh, probably my first two or three years of real estate, I kind of had that nagging feeling the whole time. Like, I would go to sleep at night and just be like, what am I doing? <laughs> what? Because like, like, you have no boss, you have no schedule. It's, it's, it's flexible and flexible sounds great like before you get in it and then you're in it, you're like god i kind of miss like showing up for a job and punching the clock and having tasks and then i go home at night and i when i went home from my job in the computer world i wasn't too worried about you know whatever the hell i was programming or whatever the hell i was working on like i kind of left it at home. Yeah, real estate tends to follow you all you know so uh we'll talk a lot more about that um so just know that that can feel that's kind of natural that's kind of par for the course uh, I imagine Maureen moving to Colorado. It's probably got to feel a little bit like that, does it? Oh yeah, it's terrible. I'm terrible. Like I'm vacationing half the time. Like yeah, I got to do something. Just do one thing a day. That's, that's the key. Yeah, and we'll help you to, to know what what are the big rocks you need to be working on and all that kind of stuff. That, that's part of what we're going to talk about in this class. Uh, number three is you want to establish a lead follow up system based on the KW Touch plan. Number four, practicing and perfecting the steps of a real estate transaction to get to a successful close and get paid. The goals are to end Ignite with one or more appointments, begin the process of working with a buyer or seller to buy or sell a home, and develop success habits that will benefit you for your entire real estate career. All right. So today we begin with real estate expert of choice. These four lessons will set you on your path to success with direction, clarity, and enthusiasm. Today, in Spark Your Career, so these are the first four classes here, right? So I'm teaching this one today and that one tomorrow. And then throughout these 20, you're going to get all sorts of different instructors from all from the office, right? A lot of top producers and stuff, which is really cool. By the way, sometimes you're going to get a top producer in here, and they're not going to stick to the material at all. And that's not bad. That's not like roll with it. All right. Here's what I recommend. This whole series has two major components to the learning part. There's the book, which is great. And there's great material in it. And a lot of times instructors stick to the book and that's great because it's, it's really well written. I, trust me, I've gone through it line by line over and over because I was a coach for a few years, as you guys know, I know it really well and it's fantastic. Sometimes you have a, a, somebody who comes in here and they didn't prepare for the class or whatever. And they're just like, hey, today we're talking about open houses. Let me tell you about some of my crazier open house stories. And they just tell you about open houses for an hour, for an hour and a half. That's not bad. That's cool. Just know that I would still read the material because there's going to be some basics that are in there that they may even forget to tell you because they don't even realize that you guys don't know some of these basic things, right? So just roll with that. So what I'm saying is, is like, there's the material in the book and then there's a the material that somebody's going to be speaking up here and just try to follow along with both of them because they're not always going to overlap how they should yeah okay um so today we're gonna uh in sparker here you're gonna, you're gonna get acquainted with kw and ignite at a high level we're going to talk some about kw culture and your market center's culture into the way you engage and interact with others that's very cool by the way they used to not teach at ignite i'm super stoked about that we're going to tap into all the resources KW offers. And most importantly, today we're going to create a vision for the future. And you're all going to set some goals, your goals, not my goals, your goals. You guys are going to set some goals. Uh, today, uh, da, 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 there's going to be no success system time today. Uh, this will allow you to be prepared for working your success system tomorrow. Okay, cool. All right, moving on. Ignite instills in all of us. Okay, we are today. Okay, Ignite instills in all of us a new way of thinking. It's all about having a successful mindset with no doubts. Today, we're going to talk about an unlimited mindset fueled by the six personal perspectives, KW culture, the value of working with KW and your market center, KW resources that will set you up for success, your career vision, 
and the success system that is going to superpower your business throughout, throughout Ignite and beyond. Can I get a volunteer who wants to read it? Oh, come on, jump at it. Where's, where's your hands? Who, who want, I've got a listing for a million dollars. I will give it to the next person. Right, 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 yeah, now, now everyone's like, oh, shoo. They're not even thinking about it. Lily, go ahead. Absolutely. This quote is from uh, this quote is from one of Gary Keller's and his team's published books. Gary Keller is the founder and the CEO of Ke Ke Keller Williams, obviously, and one of the most influential people in the world of real estate. That is so true. And even I have not always been at KW in my career, and I can tell you that even when I wasn't, I was always paying attention to what Gary Keller was saying and doing. This quote expresses something that is so true about real estate. Real estate is a wonderful business and one where you can make a lot of money run your own successful enterprise and achieve your biggest dreams. Do you know that there's an agent, there's some agents in this office who will probably make a million dollars of profit this year. Can you imagine that? One million dollars of profit in one year. Let that sink in. That's possible. Anyone can do it. Not everyone will, will you? Anyone wanna share some thoughts on this? Yeah, okay. um, when you get into the business, you're like, I will never be that person on that sign or, oh, that person owns that neighborhood. I can tell you after doing this 19 years, all the signs have different names on them than when I first started. Mm. Okay, so there's just a little mm. nugget. I, you know, this, this job is so much about mindset. And, um, you know, I used to often go up against these, you know, I was a nobody. I go up against these huge teams for a listing appointment and go, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have a shot at that. But there's everybody, you guys have ever heard of the DISC profile. I always go back to that when I'm training or when I'm, because a lot of times people are going to connect with you differently than they're going to connect with you, right? You have two different people, two different perspectives, two different personalities. People want to work with people they like, okay? Obviously, you need to have the tools and the knowledge and all that, too. A lot of times I go and I have the same, like, presentation practically as another agent that was just there before me in regards to, like, oh, the comps and the details and what is your price of home, blah, blah, blah. But it's all about the authenticity of yourself and connecting with the people you are working with. And... Um, the biggest, you know, I used to, our, our KW office in the South Bay was actually in Manhattan Village. Everybody know where that is, the Wigan Mall. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I live in Manhattan Village. I'm working in Manhattan Village. I'm going to farm Manhattan Village. And I was going up against these huge agents that have been there forever. Well, they all died or they all <laughs> retired. And had I stuck with that Manhattan Village farm, I would own Manhattan Village. But the, the point being is that people change. And, and like I said, with technology and the, this, this environment of real estate being very techy, a lot of the older, a lot of people just never retire on this job, right? They just fall over. Um, but the point being is that anyone can do it. It's just you have the wherewithal to stick with it stay with it. And if you stick with it two years, the phone starts calling you. You don't always have to be calling them. I never cold call anyone now. The phone rings for me. Okay. So that's where you want to get. And it takes sometimes two to five years. It's just, do you have the perseverance to get there? And sometimes it happens faster. Sometimes it happens slower, but it's just a matter, you know, this is one career that the average person can be a millionaire. It's just, the, are you the, are you the person that sticks with it, sticks with all the things that this young man is going to teach you and, and stay with it. Love it. Thanks, Maureen. That's perfect. Love it. Oops, skipped one. There we go. Six, six personal perspectives. Would you like to know the key to success and abundance? That's a big words right there, right? Uh, it's the six personal perspectives. The six personal perspectives are the ways successful people who have come before us think and approach problems and challenges. It's about the mindset of success. These came about from Gary Keller researching successful people in all fields and asking this question, these questions. What is, what is it that differentiates those who achieve at the highest level from those who don't seem to accomplish as much? 
From those answers, he put together these common perspectives. They work in unison, they do not stand alone, and they work most eff effectively in the order shown. Embracing and committing to all six perspectives will help you achieve success in your life and in this business. Let's explore each one. That's what, let me just tell you really guys real quick. Like the longer I'm in this, in this industry, in this world, like you guys are all thinking here like, oh my God, how do I list a property? How do I do that? And I wish I, I could give you what is in my head because after all this time, I realized what is far more important is like the habits you develop and the way you think of yourself and the, your mindset. And that is part of what we do. That is part of what comes about in classes like Ignite. It's one of the things that, that Keller Williams is so big on that other companies just have not, they think, they think it's, they think it's the, our profit share system. Dude, I, I, one of my major things is recruiting. And I will say, I don't even, half the time I never even mentioned profit share and other companies think it like they've duplicated our profit share. And that's the secret to our success. Like <laughs> you don't get it. It's about teaching people how to think so that they can grow bigger. Right. Uh, I, 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 I digress because I get all excited about that. Okay. The first perspective that all high achievers share is commit to self-mastery. Notice it's not commit to mastery. It's not commit. It's commit to self-mastery. What's the difference? Self-mastery is the possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that make you the master of you. When you commit to achieving self-mastery, you, one, know your goals, Two, you know your strengths and your weaknesses, right? We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. Get over it, like embrace it. You know, one of the things I love about working with Simon is that he and I are like, so, like he's so strong in the things I'm not strong in. And I have some things I'm strong in that he's not as good. Like we complement each other really well. That's really fun. Uh, number three, know how to work with both your strengths and weaknesses to seek and master the necessary knowledge, skills, and habits to reach your goals. Throughout Ignite, you will be acquiring the skills and developing habits to be successful, moving you towards self-mastery. The question is, are you committed to self-mastery? That is, are you committed to knowing your goals, strengths, and weaknesses? Are you, committed, are you committed to acquiring the knowledge, skills, and habits to be successful in this business? Uh, I believe you've answered the question for yourself by being here today and committing to ignite. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I do like that, right? Number two, has anybody ever heard of the 80-20 rule, 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle? It's also called if you want to be like really techie about it. That is, uh, that's what we call the, the second perspective is commit to the 80-20 principle. The idea that 20% of your actions lead to 80% of your results may be one of the most powerful principles you can apply to your life. It's about getting the most from your time and effort. It's about maximizing your results. It's about having focus. You will sometimes hear the 20% activities described as big rocks. Uh, we use that term along here, like make sure you take care of your big rocks first, then you can worry about the little stuff. Um, or the one thing or your dollar produ productive activities, right? Those are all terms people apply to what we know as being the 20% that is important to real estate. Most of the time, nine times out of 10, we know for all of us, the 20% is lead generation. Um, oh shoot! I was, I was supposed to say that. I was supposed to ask that. What would you get? What, here, here you go. What would you, what would you guess is the most dollar productive activity of a real estate agent? Oh, guess. Oh, you guys. All right, not too bad. All right, people are paying attention. All right, cool. Um, anyone, anyone want to add to that? Comments, concerns, with like questions? Um, I'll add. It's not necessarily about eighty twenty, but I about mindset in general. I did this 40 day fast from wrong thinking. It's a podcast by mm -hmm. Gregory Dickow. And um, it is all about reversing negative thinking mm -hmm. and just the limiting beliefs and like things that we can tell ourselves, like I can't change or here's my identity. And so it, it was wonderful. And um, I got a transaction in the middle of that time of the 40 days. And um, it's, it's interesting too, because when I joined last October, one thing that Simon had said to me is, well, you can meet your cap within one transaction. And I was like, oh no, that's not going to be me. You know, like, how could you do that? And I did. <laughs> like, knock on wood, it all goes awesome. first. Thank you. But um, so, so now it's, I, I do believe like it's lead generating in a way where you're not living on a prayer that, that like, I was very blessed that that one thing did come my way from a friend 
but yeah, I've got to be more active now, which is why I'm here too. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. Th thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. In Ignite, we identify your 20% for you. Your money-making activity is lead generation. When you commit to this, you will make more money, have more time with your family, and be more organized. Pretty great, huh? By the way, you can work 90 hours a week in real estate. You can do that. It is possible. I, By the way, I did that when I was new. You don't have to do that. We can teach you how to... You can you can climb to the highest highs in this, comp, in this field by working 40 hours a week, totally possible. In fact, I will argue as, as, as I've gotten further and further to get to the really highest levels, you can't, you can't work 90 hours. You'll, you'll, the, the list of people who have burnt out in this job is long. Uh, that's a lot of reason why people who are the top agents around, they worked so hard to get there that they're afraid to take a day off. And so they just work, work, work until they grind themselves into the ground and then they quit and they never do real estate again. So something to be said for for working smarter not hard, you know not harder right well i am um, during 2020 i had six transactions going and um you know my husband's company completely shut down and i'm like honey i got us no worries we're good don't worry about us i can handle mortgages i can handle wills and then um i had five cancellations within a week and so i had one deal um, going through chemo, going through radiation. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, oh, crap. Yeah, that's like, you know, looking at two major operations. And, um, you know, one day at a time, right? One foot in front of the other. So um, bottom line is 2020, I was top team. Uh, sick ends, cancer's ass, had stage four colon cancer. And um, here to talk about it. And it's like, when people tell me, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, talk about the 80 20 rule. The I can't is part of that 80, you know? The, the I can is just picking up the phone, calling people, it'll follow up. I mean, 99, what what is what is Bob Lalaka call it all the time? The fortune's in the follow up. So you may meet people, whatever, okay, grab their information, reach out to them, have them become a Facebook friend, like all those little things is part of the 80%, but the follow up is really you know the fortunes of follow-up so and and oh by the way i lost half of my team during that time as well so because you know not because of me so much versus relationships and covid freaked but a lot of people out so mm -hmm. you know so i'm here to talk about it you know i'm alive well completely in remission but also my business um you know i now go back and forth to colorado and I don't know what did I do last year. I don't know. I was mm. number two, three last year. I, Pretty I, awesome. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember in this office. Yeah. But the bottom line is, I everything fell apart. But if you just stick with the same things and stick with those relationships and people that they want to work with you, the great thing about real estate, we're on both ends of the deal, right? People always have to buy. People always have to sell. We're on both ends, okay? Interest rates went up two percent. That's never happened in my 19, 20 years of doing this. And it's just like I had almost 125 people through my open house this weekend. It's like, okay, it's now affecting, right? If you would have listened to one of our lenders at our meeting, which I wanted to do that at the end of the meeting, <laughs> it's like it's all in your perspective. It's like, okay, well, understand it. What's going on in our economy? What's happening? Understand it, be that economist of, of choice. But we are on both sides of the deal. We are on both sides of, of this business. So anything can happen. Love right? it. Absolutely. Love it. Oops. Okay, the third perspective that top performers recognize and understand is how to move from being E, which is entrepreneurial, to P, purposeful. All of us can attain a certain level of success utilizing our natural abilities. And we can also expect to hit a ceiling at some point. For example, let's say as a kid, you got really good at doing cartwheels and flips. Did having that natural ability allow you to perform in a circus? Most likely the answer is no. You would need to practice and work with a coach for some time before you could perform in the circus. Likewise, likewise we all hit a ceiling of achievement by relying on our natural abilities alone. And the way to break through ceilings of achievement is to get purposeful. What does it mean to get purposeful? It means focusing on the models and systems that organize you and your tasks into the most efficient and effective endeavor possible. 
uh, we're gonna, I don't like the way they describe this. I love this, but I don't like how they describe it either. So what they're talking about is a lot of people get into real estate and they're like, they have, they, they came from a sales position or whatever. They, they have some natural ability as a salesperson. And so they don't worry about learning a lot. They're just like, you know, I got this. And they just go out there and start selling. And some of them do pretty good. And that, but they hit everybody, no matter who it is, is going to hit a ceiling, a natural level of achievement. That's, that is how far your natural ability will take you. And then when you get to that point, then they, then they have trouble trying to break through that. What we're saying uh, is, and, and by the way, when they do that, usually like they start applying some creativity right in front. I'm gonna, I have an idea. I'm going to do this and that. And they start trying to reinvent the wheel right from day one because they, they think like, you know, I'm a natural sales guy. I've got this. What, what we're teaching here is, hey, before you go out there and start getting creative and start thinking that TikTok is the wave of the future and that's how you're going to find all of your buyers and sellers. Before you do that, a lot of really smart people have come before you. And, and by the way, in this company, we're really big on interviewing a lot of those people and finding out what makes them tick. And that's how Gary created his book. He didn't come up with all these great ideas. He just interviewed a ton of people and said, you're doing awesome. What is it that you're doing? And then he figured out there, oh, here's a bunch of things that I keep hearing about. So that must be a thing. Let's put that in a system. Oh, I keep hearing about this thing. Let's, let's, let's formulate that and figure out how, you know, he'd go back to those people that is this, is this how I'm describing it here? Is this what you, you know, that's how the book came about is figuring out what's working for people and formulating it. What I'm saying is we have systems and tools and models, plug into them, use them, follow those first. Eventually you're gonna hit a ceiling. And then when that happens, that's when it's time to figure, to find a new model. Like maybe there's something new you need to learn to get to that next place, right? And then eventually you're gonna get to a place where you might get to the highest levels where there's like, there's, there's not a whole lot written about it. There's something kind of new. And that's when you apply creativity and start figuring out stuff for, your, for yourself because there, there's no charted course before you already. The, the point being is use what people have come before you first before you start trying to get creative and reinventing the wheel. That, does that make sense? Everybody yeah, following? I have something to add. But yeah, I please. Anybody have kids in this room? Kind of face your hand if you have a kid. I'm starting to use this stuff on my kid. He's 27 years old and he's in... Um, IRS criminal investigation training right now for the IRS. And he's so uncomfortable, it's not even funny. He is out of his element. He's being trained as a law enforcement officer. This is my quiet little shy accountant. <laughs> and I, I'm using this stuff on him. And I said, every time you are uncomfortable in getting to the next level, you're going, I, I said, you're going from E to P. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, <laughs> I you it. are going to the point of growth. If it's not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So everybody who sat down here and doing this class and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. You're growing, you're uncomfortable. You're learning new, new skills that, trust me, I, I'm, I'm, you know, got in this business, I was 37 years old, going through a divorce. And I was completely uncomfortable, whole new world. But at the same time, when I was, I knew it was uncomfortable, cold calling or even calling my database, it's uncomfortable, right? But it's, it, it's growth too. So that's how I look at E to P is when I'm uncomfortable, I know I'm growing. I know I'm getting to the next level. I'm getting closer to the next deal. Love it. Uh, the fourth perspective is an obvious one and one you're already doing by being here today. It's being learning based. A learning-based individual appreciates learning for their own improvement. They know what they know and know that there is always more to know. Uh, an individual who does not appreciate learning is what's referred to as ignorance-based. They know what they know, but they ignore everything else, right? Learning-based individuals have made the decision to use effective learning as the foundation piece for their action plan to develop their life. Training and education are a big part of moving forward to attain goals and succeed at a high level. Learning-based individuals commit to the process of acquiring skill-based habits, yeah? Ignite is just the start for you as a learning-based individual. You will learn about many more learning opportunities available for you from Keller Williams. We'll get that down the road. Here's a quote from Albert Einstein who is undoubtedly a learning-based individual. Can I get a volunteer? Richard. Love that. What a great quote. 
That's from Stay Einstein. Stay curious, my friends. <laughs> right? I love Einstein saying, I'm neither, I'm neither especially clever or especially gifted, right? That's some, that's some uh, humility there. Uh, being learning-based means staying in curiosity and being eager to learn more. Five, remove your limiting beliefs. This is what we were just talking about. Uh, the fifth perspective is removing limiting beliefs. High achievers remove beliefs that hold them back. What are limiting beliefs? And by the way, oftentimes limiting beliefs are screaming in your ear, but oftentimes even more often, they whisper in your ear like late at night. Like, oh, dude, you don't, you're, that's, that deal's totally going to fall apart. You're going to totally end up out on the street. Or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, I don't know about you guys, but that, you know, I can have some of those things from time to time. Can, right? I, read, can I read something from, uh, write this down, you guys, A Brilliant Tribe. We think his name is Tristan Ahumada. He always has great stories and inspiring stories, and he sent this to me this week. So there's a story about the tale of two dogs. Both dogs at separate times walk into the same room. One comes out wagging his tail while the other comes out growling. A woman watching this goes into the room and sees what could possibly make one dog so happy and the other so mad. To her surprise, she finds a room full of mirrors. The happy dog found a thousand happy dogs looking back at him, while the angry dog only saw angry dogs growling back at him. What you see in the world around you is a reflection of who you are. And one of my buyer's agents named, her name is Alicia Sanchez. I said, she is in the world of the happy dogs. This woman, nothing can get this woman down. <laughs> I mean, she could lose every deal on the planet, whatever, lose her home, lose her car, lose her dog, and she will come in here happy and try to help any one of you. And you will be Dally. She's, she's a renowned happy dog. Um, but the bottom line is that the world is what you make of it. We, we, you know, we live in our heads, right? We don't necessarily live in the world, we live in our heads. So. Mm -hmm. This will come back to you at a time where you're like feeling defeated, but you're only feeling defeated because you're in your head. So get out of your head. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We all have limiting beliefs, all of us, from time to time. And it's best to recognize them and change them. For example, are any of these thoughts in your head? Well, uh, so here are the ones that he says up here. I don't have enough time for training, right? Some people are like, oh my God, there's no, I can't take it. I don't have time for it. You can, you can probably make it happen right? You could probably figure out time to make it happen. I can't be successful in this market. There's so many agents walking around, like the minute interest rates went up, like, like uh, Maureen was talking about, so many agents are like just ready to pack it in. Oh man, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no way I can, I, I can't work with buyers anymore. The interest rates went up to almost 6% or whatever the number is right now. Uh, I, I might as well just pack it up, right? There's still people, there's just, Maureen just told us there was an open house with about what, 100 people in it that we can I, was at, I probably gave out 150 buyers last quarter. So clearly there's still, some people are still buying. They're not, they, they can make it happen, right? So that's a limiting belief right there, right? Some people, you may be thinking like, oh man, how am I ever going to compete with those people who have been in the business for a long time? Yes, you can. Some people are going to be thinking, um, uh, I, I can't take a listing. Like I don't have enough money to cover the expense. What? Yes, you can. You can figure it out a way. There's, there's, especially when you're new in real estate, there's so many, I don't want to make phone calls. I don't want to tell people they're going to hang up on me. They're going to, they're going to not like me if I call them and talk to them about real estate, right? These are all limiting beliefs. Now we just got to figure out what, how to correct those, right? What, what are some other ones that you guys might have? Any, any limiting beliefs out there? This is a good time to open up. It's a safe place. One more invention where uh, to intimidate and jump into the market where there's already major players that have been, you know, 10 toes down in it already, right? So it's like, oh, I can't compete with that. Or another one that jumps in my mind is my database doesn't come from affluence. So how am I going to reach out to people that I know and expect them to buy million dollar homes, right? So like, being able to shake that, and like, oh, whatever, there's somebody I know that comes to my restaurant that's probably falling out of control that likes less than you mean that. Trust me with their, with their money. So, a lot, a lot of them are in the mind, not even just in real estate, but like, as you mentioned, like life in general. And it sounds like that podcast you're thinking about is like getting kind with yourself, getting rid of those negative voices that come to mind that we learned from our mom and pop growing up or whatever. It was a lot harder than those growing up than what it is now. You know? so, so, yeah, tons of women for themselves. I love that, Matthew. Right on. Right on. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks for sharing that. That's that's exactly right, right? And those things crop up with all of us. We all have them. We all have stuff like that at various times. Yeah. Um, so cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so can I tell you a story about um, Colorado? So I um, I have like a little brand that I have here. So I gave it to my gal that does my my print work, and I said make something you know mountainy or whatever. And I just threw a command ad, literally just out in the great universe with my new branding. And literally a day later, get a call from an agent in San Diego, and I'm in California, you know, working on listing. And he's like, um, hi, uh, you know, I got a client that's uh, looking at Vail. Can you, can you show them property in Vail? I don't know, first thing about Vail. Okay. I don't know his face. I don't, I'm, like, I'm like, sure. Um, just kind of sound, trying to figure it out in my head. And he's like, um, then he hangs at him and he's like, great, I'll send you their information, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and then two minutes later, he called me back. He's like, actually, they're also interested in Aspen. And I'm like, I've never been to Aspen. Um, and, I, and she's like, well, he might be thinking about Aspen too. And I said, sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. Just send me their information, we'll get in touch, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just like you guys. You're like, oh, crap. Um, and so the first thing I do, I met a gal at, at, at Keller Williams Edwards as part of that office. I call her. She was the nicest person to me when I, you know, went to a meeting. And I said, Leslie, I have us a client. You got, you know, can you, can you partner me, with me on this? And that's what I did. And yeah, sure, I would make ten thousand. I could have made twenty-two thousand. He bought a condo site on C. Blah blah blah. I just did what I do. I, you know, I, you know, and I'll tell you what I do. You know, when I'm trying to find a, a property for a client. But the bottom line is, it's like if you don't know, it's that not don't fake it till you make it. I don't like that phrase. Just pair up with someone who can help you. And if someone asks you a question, you just say, you know what, I want to be 100% on this response to you. Let me check with my partner and I'll get back to you. I'd rather tell you the sure thing versus what. I did that endlessly in my first year of real estate. So again, just, just. Be open. You never know what can happen. Command is a very interesting concept. I don't use it here as much as I use it in Colorado. Oh, interesting. Right? And um, I just get random calls, and I don't. They drop from the sky. Um, the year my mother died, I did seven probate deals. Seven. I'd never done a probate deal in my life. My mom went to heaven. She just kept sending me her referrals. Um, and did I know anything about that? No. I just paired up with a probate expert. So this office. You know, there's one of them right there. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He's been here forever. And, um, you know, there's so many people in this office. Just say yes, and then go find the resource, and they'll help you. Yeah. By the way, on that note, uh, you guys may not know this, we have an internship program for people who are working to get their real estate license. They don't, they don't even have a license here, right? I just got a call this morning. Somebody's like, I was on this cruise this weekend, and I met this guy who was a, a, an ex, he's a, a former NBA basketball player. He wants to buy a house in Irvine. I want to help him, but I don't even have a license yet. And I was like, I got it. So I got, I, I put her in touch with, with uh, Michelle Brown, who's the region uh, director of Keller Williams sports and entertainment. She's going to get paired up. There you go. Now they're off and running and she's going to take care of this client. She doesn't have her license yet. So she can't officially be the agent, but Michelle's like, I'll make sure I include her. And, you know, you know, I'll make sure to include her and, and work with her. So my point is being, there's tons of resources around here. So even if you don't know the answer, it's okay to not know the answer. Like, like Maureen was saying, you know somebody who knows the answer to any real estate question at this office, I promise you. And it motivated me to, it motivated me to go learn. And what did I do? I spent the weekend in Aspen and drove by every listing and read up on every aspect of Aspen and Glenwood Springs and Vail. And so now I'm becoming a little expert in, in this area of Colorado, but it, you have to do the due diligence. You have to create value for your clients. And it's up to you to go do it, but you can partner up, you know, don't say no or don't feel like you can't say yes, because there's a lot of resources here for you. That's awesome. Yep. Um, okay, so here's where we're at. We, uh, let's cover the sixth personal perspective. Then we're going to cover a couple of ahas and everything. And then we're going to take a break for, for five minutes. Everyone can use a restroom or, or refill on your water, right? Um, okay, so let's, let's try to this last one. So the sixth and last perspective is about being accountable. What does being accountable mean to you? Who wants to give that one a crack? What does being accountable mean to you? Do what you, do what you say you're going to do? 
Love that. Anybody else want to add to that? Having maybe a mentor to also keep you accountable, mm -hmm. um, integrity in check. And, mm -hmm. yeah. I love both those answers. One is saying what you said you're going to do, and then also having somebody else who is holding you accountable, right? Accountable is a, a team sport, right? Uh, you can you can have two of you guys holding each other accountable. That's totally doable. You could have a mentor or a coach holding you accountable, right? Those are all those are those are all great stuff, right? So I did maps coaching with Trevor Williams, and oh, it was the hardest call of the week. It was thirty minutes long, but man, she was going to say, "Did you make your calls? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you create what you said you're going to create?" And you know, I was busy agent running around with buyers and sellers, and but. I love the phrase that you will get as a single mother of two boys at the same time going through all this stuff. It's like you will get done in the time allotted if you're focused, right? We all know if we have all weekend to get that one task done, we're going to do it on Sunday night, two minutes before we go to bed, right? But if you have 92 things set and you have that plan, you know, we, we have a tendency to do that, right? It's like when you give your clients, you know, two months to move out. They're still scrambling last out, right? But if you give them 25 days, you're like, you're gonna get a million dollars and get out in 20 days, we'll get out, right? It's the same concept. We fill that time so often. And the older I get, the more that's true. You know? I love it, I love it. Um, accountability is first and foremost an attitude and an approach to your entire life. An accountable person says, everything in my life is a result of my choices and actions. I own my life. Accountability is also a tool for continually changing the results in your life in those areas that matter most, your 20%. A person who is accountable in their 20% says, I own my life and in certain areas, I wanna continually improve my results. I'm gonna be purposeful and I will be learning based to continue improving. Ignite will provide you with, the, with tools to develop and cultivate your accountability to be successful. What are some of the ways that you can be accountable right now? Anyway, I think we kind of covered that a little bit, right? I'm going to start calling on people. I wrote all your names down on here. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, what? Right, I'm going to start calling on people. Okay. Jackie, what are, what, are, what are some ways you can incorporate accountability? By committing to completing this course. I love that. That's a great one right there, right? Put a, put a flag in the sand and say, I am going to complete this course. And I'm not, I'm not going to just attend, the, attend or watch the classes on video. I'm going to take part in the class. I'm going to raise my hand on occasion. I'm going to do the, do the task, right? What was the first task that, that we have to do for tomorrow? 9 to 11. Uh, that's, to that, that's part of it, but there was something before that. The first one, I, the participant guide. We don't have a participant guide printed out for you, so you got to figure out how to, how to make that happen, right? Whether it's on your computer, on your tablet, or figuring out a way to get it printed out, right? You could take the PDF over to... It's funny, I was mentioning somebody to take it over to Kinko's and she was like, what's Kinko's? I was like, oh my God, <laughs> tell me, that I've become, I'm not old now. Um, so yeah, FedEx or UPS store, right? <laughs> Kinko's, what is Kinko's? Are you kidding me? I got through college and spending half my time at Kinko's. All right. Um, yeah, completing all the Ignite assignments, asking for help, having an accountability partner, a productivity coach, or mentor. By the way, uh, we have some of you guys may know this already. We have a mentor, uh, a coaching program that we had for a while. Uh, it's undergoing some changes right now because Sonia Roland, who as our coach, took a uh, job as a to become a team leader at an office. So she's going to be leaving us to, to go pursue this opportunity. That's awesome for her. For us, uh, that means that we got to find a new coach, and, and so we're kind of taking advantage of the situation. We're going to launch a new program that has coaching and mentorship. You're going to get, you're not just going to have a coach, you're going to have a coach and a mentor. And we're going to talk all about that on Wednesday at 1 30. So if that's something you don't, if, if I haven't already talked to you already about it, just know that hopefully you guys will be here Wednesday at 1 30 to, to, to talk about that. Okay. But I digress. Uh, remember you can reach the highest level of achievement in business and life by adopting these six personal perspectives. Happiness is not an individual sport. This quote is about happiness and yet it applies to business as well. Your business success is not an individual sport. As Gary Keller has learned, no one succeeds alone. That's a, I love that quote. Uh, I think it's from MREA, no one succeeds alone. 
This quote, this quote here, happiness is not an individual sport, comes from Sean Anker, who pioneered the research that reveals happy humans are more productive, creative, better at problem solving, and even healthier and less stressed. Would you agree that these outcomes lead to better business success? Absolutely. Right on. Embrace being accountable. Find a mentor, coach, or partner to help you be accountable and happy. Okay. Can I bring up one thing? Because I know everybody said, who else has another job in this room? Okay, that's you. Um, you know, there's a lot of aspects of this business, right? You're, you're formulating how you want your business to look like in this course. You also have to go learn the contract and all of those technical aspects of this business. Also, you need to also understand the market, right? Um, trust me, when you start working with a buyer, they are obsessed. Okay, when I first started this business, I had control of most of the information. And then the Zillow and the Redfins and all of these apps came along. Trust me, your clients know the market better than you, and they shouldn't. So make sure the thing I do, because this is I'm doing this in Colorado, every night before I go to bed, you know, I study a certain sector of the market and I just look at the homes that recently are pending or sold, whatever. And it's kind of like how I, it's kind of a weird thing, but I shut down my brain at the end of the night. Um, and I'm just looking at different, it's like, oh, I have, haven't seen that community before, but I read all about it and things like that. So there's many facets and many layers to this business. Um, the most important part is here and mindset and getting things ready to structure to know how to say yes to your clients. The rest is like, you know, the legal aspect, the contractual aspect learning your market because the last thing you want to do is start working with the buyer and they're like oh do you see that my house that came on the market and you're like no because you sent it to them on the auto email right <laughs> you haven't even seen it so the so you have to try to figure out in your life plus you know book flow you know <laughs> the MREA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so just you just gotta bite it up and put it in your schedule and even if it's 10 minutes um, study North Torrance. I bet you know a lot more about North Torrance than you did before you got that listing, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I know, <laughs> the point is, like, you know, because people have been saying, well, what's going on in my market? You want to have a listing, you've got to know every comp, everything that's been sold in the last year and what's right. happening and what are the increases and how how has interest rates affected my market? Well, I thought they were going to. I, I, I had my client price the home probably too low because I was worried about. A two percent, you know, in my twenty years, I've never seen this in many recent five weeks. So it's like I wanted them to be very conservative about their price point because, you know, I I know a buyer that once could afford a million dollars, but they're getting a loan twenty percent down, they can now can only afford seven fifty because of what happened to rates. So I wanted to make sure that I gave them the information. Ultimately, they decided on what their purchase price was, but I'm the one that had to make sure I understood what's going on in the lending world. And, and their their market, and that's a big part of them saying yes to your listing presentation. So this this business is many tiers and a lot of. So think of it as a four year degree. Anybody go to college and do a four year degree? Okay, here you're trying to do a rapid like become successful real estate in six <laughs> weeks, but it takes a lot of depth and a lot of knowledge. So you know, think of this as this mentoring program and this coaching program as your four-year college degree. They're going to expedite the process for you so you don't have to start from step number one, because many of us have, have done this before you, let us help you get there. And I'm not part of the mentoring program because I have two lives, um, but I could be. But the, the bottom line is that you want to make sure you're doing your due diligence to create the value for your clients. And it doesn't just happen. It, it, it's like you said, it's a, it's a America is a, a proactive sport here in real estate. I love it. Love it. Um, okay, so you're going to notice throughout Ignite that we will share ahas because they are powerful and meaningful insights that come from reflection on the experiences we're having. When we share them out loud, we further strengthen the power of the aha and we'll, we help fellow participants have powerful ahas as well. Ah. Uh, it's a good idea to jot down your ahas in your participant guide. That's part of why we want to have those printed out or, or available on your computer, right? So let's hear from a few of you. What ahas have you had so far about from the six personal perspectives? Any ahas out there? Think lessons learned? Nathan, how about you? You've been quiet today. What you got? 
Any, any, anything that uh, strike, your, strike you from what we've gone over today? No, mostly just mindset. I, I hear in my own band a lot often in like, like the narrative of what I think is going to happen. And yeah. Not at all what happens. So, yeah, just get out of the way and just focus on what I need. So, maybe re rewriting some limiting beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I like that. I like that. I don't know this. Jackie, go look for it. I don't know yeah. this came out hot, but I remember when she was speaking and she was talking about how you know, with people build relationships. Mm -hmm. When I was studying to get my real estate license, I was everywhere. Yeah. I was in Starbucks, I was in the library, I was in the grocery store, and I would bump into the same people over and over again, and they knew that I was studying. Sometimes I would bump into people now and they go, How did you do? I'm like, What do you mean? And they would remind me that I was studying to take my real estate license and I'm able to give them my car. Oh, so that's my yeah. That's a good one. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Anybody else? Aha is from so far today. Yeah, Richard. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing would be accountability. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to know what you're listening to, you're going to be able to go out and test it. Very right. Yeah. Very cool. We're going to talk about more about accountability on Wednesday in the in the coaching group. But yeah, I, I will tell you, I, I've so I've been in this in this field for what twelve years now, and I think. I don't think I've ever not had a coach. And by the way, including now, I still have a coach to this day. We still go over my, just like you guys, my, most of my role these days is in recruiting and, and uh, finding agents, top agents to join our office. And so I have my own set of numbers that I review weekly with my coach still to this day. Um, so it's, you know, uh, I highly recommend it. I highly get, recommend that, that accountability feedback loop. It helps propel you forward. You, you you think you can do it on your own, but it, and you can, but it's so much more effective when you've got someone else on your team who's, who's pushing you and, uh, you know, helping you get, helping you cross those, those bridges. Um, cool. Good stuff. And coaching is another way of saying therapy. You know, we have therapy when we're younger, but now we have coaching. It's like your therapeutic, you know, need to like, this is so hard and this is hard, but it's also, it's not easy, but it's simple. I mean, if you do those tasks and you stay accountable, like was it Nathan? Do that? Mm -hmm. Richard. Richard. Uh, Richard was just talking about accountability. Richard, yeah. But like you going out, okay. So you know how many people that 80% of the excuses that, oh, well, it's COVID, nobody wants anybody knocking on their door. Every realtor on the freaking planet is put that seat. It's like, oh, I don't need the door knock anymore. They've given themselves an excuse not to door knock because of COVID. Not many people will do it, and you're doing it. And that's huge because you're going to, if you keep doing that time and time again, that neighborhood is going to be yours. Just don't stop doing it, no yeah. matter what anybody says. Because every other realtor out there is making an excuse for them that. Oh, no, no, not the door. They don't want strangers breathing on them, by right? We're all, I've given myself that excuse, trust me. Um, but the point being is you're doing it and you're new and, and that, oh, and by the way, nobody, you don't have to tell anybody you're new. They're going to assume you're a realtor, okay? So I, in my classes, I always have everybody raise their hand. Do not confess to the world you're new because you're not new because you're going to partner with me or someone else that has 20 years experience and we're going to help you get through whatever. So you don't have to go publicize to the world your brand new agents. And, because not everybody wants to invest a million dollars with their brand new agent that's never done anything before. Friends might, family, you know, might be pressured into it. And not everybody's going to want to do that. But if you guys go do the due diligence and the education and all that, you, you're more than qualified to represent anyone. But don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. All right.
Hey, um, so question for you guys. We've got 35, 37 minutes left. So we got a bunch of stuff to cover. Do you guys want to take a five or 10 minute break or you want to just kind of go through and anybody's use the restroom or get a drink of water, knock yourself out whenever you want. How's that? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. So probably take a couple, we'll, we'll break for a couple minutes and then we'll keep going. We may be going before you get back. That's all good. We'll, we'll just keep it quiet on going. I'm just talking too much. Not at all. I love it, Maureen. This is awesome. Uh, I should sit on a stool. Please come to come to. Um, um, no, no. What's that? I said I can't help myself. I, I'm I'm stoked that you're here. It's it's so much better. It's fun not to have to talk with you. Yeah, I I welcome it for sure. <laughs> and it's just I don't know. It's just more interesting than one person. You know, especially because you're you're you know you're in production, you're you know a top agent, and so and, stay there. <laughs> I'm getting kind of lazy in my old place. Yeah, it's a challenge like relocating. I, you know, I had a thriving business in on the East Coast, and when I moved here in 2016, it was it was it was challenging to 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 start over again in a new town. Um, it was also fun too, but but you know, it was def, definitely. Uh, you know, I was used to having some clout and people just didn't know who I was. It took a while to, to, to get that going. Yeah. And there's, you know, again, all those limiting beliefs I started with, it's like there, I'm like, oh, okay, he'll be around for a while. Yeah. He's, he's older than me. He'll, he'll, you know. But at the same time, I, I don't have to, you know, I'm not a single mom living on a commission income only. Family, yeah. Right. I have, yeah. I have income properties. I have all that. That helps a ton. That, yeah, that way you just the get... pressure is off. I, I, yeah. If it's not fun, I don't do it. Mm -hmm. so, I, I seriously, especially after you like get diagnosed with stage four cancer, you're like, <laughs> oh shit, I thought I had more time, right? And you're like, so if I, I don't do it unless it's fun now. You know, so. But no, I, I commend you for, for door knocking and, and oh, doing yeah. that and just getting to yeah. know the neighbors and just staying out there and being present and then seeing your face, right? Jim? Very true. Staying with it. Concentrate and you can make it. And some of my best clients are from like the beginning. Like my, I walked my little son to kindergarten and met another mom. She bought seven properties from me. Wow. Another, another client when I was farming in one spot, she bought six. And now her grandchildren are buying property from me. Like one client, one relationship can, I think it led to like 15 deals one time. I think I like, That's cool. I was in a coaching class and they said, how did you meet this person and how many deals did they lead to? It's, it's mind blowing, you know? yeah. especially buyers. Buyers are happy. Okay. Sellers, if you know you want all the listings, yeah, yeah, yeah. sellers like move away. I've had to try and move to Atlanta. Austin, Idaho, uh, Colorado, uh, Vegas, and they leave and they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my buyers still are around and they love me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I started with buyers for the most part. Most people do. Very cool. So, and if they can, if they can buy in this market, they can buy in any market. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about KW culture and how it, how it can help you in your career. Uh, there is an entire page devoted to culture on Connect, our company internet of resources available to all of you. In fact, culture is the number one reason people say they choose Keller Williams. Today, we're going to focus on three elements of culture, and we're going to do it very quickly because I want to get to uh, goal setting for you guys today. MVVBP stands for mission, vision, values, beliefs, perspective. Um, we're going to take a quick look at some of these things here. The mission, who wants to read out the, the KW mission statement? Uh, to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Ignite focuses on helping to build careers worth having. Of course, the intention is to build businesses worth owning as well. Many KW agents have built, built businesses worth owning and are living a great life they envision for themselves. Many KW agents have grown to the point where they are achieving fulfillment by providing experiences for others 
and laying foundations uh, for legacies worth leaving, right? So by the end of Ignite, we're gonna revisit the mission and explore your thoughts on, a, on what that means to you. Here's our belief system, the Y4C2Ts, you'll hear it referred to as. Um, who wants to read through here? Lily, how about you? You wanna read, read these? No, that's, uh, can you not can I see them okay? That, that's okay. We're just, we're just reading through. This is, the, this is our KW belief system. The Y4C2Ts, we often call them. Win-win. Yep, win, win, or no deal, right? Integrity. Do the right thing. Customers always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Creativity, ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust, start with honesty. Equity, opportunities for all. Uh, success, results through people. Very cool. And by the way, equity is a new one. This one wasn't here in 2020. This was new as of late 2020. I believe it was when we added it, right? Uh, and that one is that we realized that in America, uh, not everybody has had the same opportunities over time. And some of that still pervades to this day and in our company. And we wanted to make sure that we as a company wanted to make sure that everyone was represented at the table at our company. And also that we were promoting because we're so situated to help help have a positive impact on that throughout America. And that's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that, that we as a company did that. Um, I wish I had more time to talk about it. There's a couple classes. In fact, I'm working on, on getting my certificate for being an agent of distinction. <clears throat> There's a class called Color of Real Estate and another class called Unconscious Bias that, uh, that you take to, to, to get that certification. I encourage you all to do it. It's super, super cool. Um, don't have time right now to go into it more because right now we're going to talk more about Red Day and KW Cares. Red Day began in 2009, and that is a day when all around America, well, all around the world now, uh, agents at KW offices, May 13th, do something to contribute to their community. Uh, when I was in, in Carolina, we'd had on our Red Day, we uh, revamped a YMCA building. Uh, we painted it, we put in all this uh, landscape. It was really cool. It was, uh, like you could totally tell a difference, but before and after, it was really cool. Uh, here, a few years back, we did, we did a, a day where we did work with special needs people, uh, uh, special needs kids. And we weren't able to do that throughout COVID because of, for obvious reasons. In fact, we had a beach cleanup. We did a beach cleanup on Manhattan Beach, which is kind of ridiculous because Manhattan Beach is like the cleanest beach on the planet. And we, and we were all there like, you know, with trash bags, but there's not a whole lot to pick up. So we're all kind of like, uh, you know, racing because somebody found something left on the beach. We're like, oh my God, wait, no, that's mine. That's my trash. Yeah. Um, but this year we're actually uh, going to be back to working with special needs kids. So hopefully you guys can take part in that. That's going to be May 13th. It's a really cool thing that we do this as a company, and I hope you guys take part in it. Uh, KW Cares is a 501c3 nonprofit. It, it's dedicated to serving KW associates and their qualifying family members experiencing hardship as a result of a sudden emergency. What this means is KW Cares provides financial grants and aid when these unforeseen emergencies create difficult circumstances that our KW associates and their immediate families cannot overcome on their own. KW Cares has given away millions and millions and millions in this way. This is the very heartbeat of KW culture in action. So we see that sometimes at a big scale, there's a hurricane, right? Uh, hurricane Katrina, KW Cares was there, like big uh, uh, tractor trailer loaded with all sorts of stuff to help them out. Uh, other you know, earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, you see that kind of stuff but you see it on a smaller level too. We have agents at our office that have, have contributed, who have, well, uh, contributed, but also benefited in this way. Last year, one of our agents passed away suddenly, uh, JR, and um, KW Cares contributed to their family. Uh, there was another family, I forgot who it was now, but uh, she stood up at the team meeting and was talking about this. Well, a few years back, her family had uh, something going on and KW Cares contributed to help her family get through it. I think she was undergoing, uh, undergoing chemotherapy or some, something like that, was, was fighting cancer at the time, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's stories throughout our company like this. So it, it's at the macro level, but it's also you know, 
on the small level too. So uh, good stuff there. And how people contribute to KW Cares. I mean, for someone like myself, I just have them take a hundred bucks every deal. I don't feel it that way. But if you look at it over time, I probably, I don't know, thousands of dollars have, have contributed, but I don't even feel it. But it's a way, our whole, most of our office does that. And it doesn't have to be a hundred dollars, it can be ten dollars, whatever. It's just, it's just something that uh, I have a lot of friends with KW who have been through a lot of tragedies and, and you know, it's nice to just somebody write a check for $10,000 to get your family through it. We hope we never are the participant, you know, the receiving, um, but it's just a, a nice way. And we also, in our office, we've done, um, I know we've done casino nights and our casino night used to be annual and it would always go towards something or someone, you know, we raised $10,000 in three hours. Um, when you had the bar rolling, you know, so I mean, this, this company is different and it's you know, those are one of the main reasons why I, I swear I see people like this weekend I saw so many um, agents around town and like some people have left and I'm like okay well I'll see you in a couple months, they'll be back, they usually come back. Yeah, very cool. It's like oh I'm trying this out, I'll, we'll see you later, we'll see you in a couple months, you know, it's usually what it is. I love it. We're going to skip the ahas on that for a moment. We're going to skip because we have a lot, uh, a good amount to cover here in this. Uh, okay, so yeah, we've got lots of awards. We're, we're always getting awards for stuff. Best, best, I know a couple of years ago with best company for women. Uh, and these are like awarded by Forbes and some major uh, organizations. Um, but let, let's skip through that because we got to cover some stuff here. Uh, training coach and does everybody know where to find the calendar for the coach for for all of the training that we have at this office? If you go to, I don't know. They keep moving stuff. so this is probably the uh, the last that we'll ever move. KWSouthBayHub.com is our hub for this office. KWSouthBayHub.com. In fact, I put it up there at the top. Uh, if you go there, and you uh, at the top you'll see career development. And then here's the training calendar. So you can go and poke in there. Everything that we have going on at, at this class will be listed there for the month of April and May and June. You can see them there. Um, so yeah, take a look at those and find things. Here's, while we're there, hold on a second here. Current slide. As a new agent, let me tell you what I would recommend that you guys participate in. Because I do, we have a lot of stuff going on at KW. You can become a professional student in KW. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's 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 a double-edged sword. We have lots of training, and then again, we have lots and lots and lots and lots of training. So here's what I recommend in your if you're in your first year of real estate. I recommend this class, Ignite. If we're probably going to do it again later on in the year, like in August, I recommend you do it again, and and go in it both feet head first all, as a hundred percent. So I recommend Ignite. I recommend reading the MREA book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. I recommend doing that a couple of times. Uh, you're going to be amazed with the second time you read it. You're like, oh my God, was this here the first time? When did they put in this chapter? I don't remember this. Um, because different things are going to strike you because it's very dense material. Uh, I recommend going to contracts classes as often as you can. Tuesday afternoons, uh, Simon and um, uh, someone else is teaching them now too. I forgot who we got. Uh, anyways, uh, Tuesday afternoons, contract classes. Go to as many of those as you can. Um, so what I do is Ignite, contract classes, MREA book. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you really need to focus on uh, at the beginning. I'm not saying don't go to other classes, but just make sure that you're getting your work done. Don't, don't let all these other things distract you from the things you need to get done. You know, uh, there's like a lunch and learn with something, you know, just be careful how many of those things you start going to, because that's going to start taking away from the time that you can dedicate to the things that will actually make you money, right? Um, okay, we cover all that. Yeah, da, da. Oh, there's also a couple of events, Family Reunion and Mega Camp. Family Reunion is uh, in February every year at different places all around the world, usually around America. Um, <clears throat> in February, we didn't have one for the pandemic, so we didn't have it for a couple of years. February, we just had it again in, in Orlando. Next year, I, I think it's Pasadena. I think we're doing Pasadena next year, which is very convenient to us. So you don't have to like get a hotel and all that. Um, so that bounces all around. That's every February and it bounces all around the country. 
uh, August, September is mega camp. And that one's always in Austin, Texas, where is our company headquarters? They're both great events. I do recommend going to them. They're not cheap because you got to pay for airfare and hotel and all that. But I will also tell you, even when I was new and broke and I did not have much money, like I still try to go at least one of those a year. And, and I'm really glad I did. It really had a good effect on me. It's not just the things you learn while you're there. It's the people from this office that you get to hang out with outside of the office in wherever you're at. It's also meeting people from around the country. And it's also just the energy, just kind of like it, it revitalizes you. It's, it's something, it, it adds to your world, right? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, command. Does everybody know what command is? Anybody not know what command is? Really cool if you know it. Command is our software. It's, uh, it's, it is a lot of things. <clears throat> Let me read what it says here. It's your database of names and contact information, like the contacts in your phone, and with a lot more information. Why is that important? Why do you want like a CRM? Because, yeah, right. Because few, a few things. Like if you have five people on your database, like you call somebody up a couple weeks later, you're going to remember what you talked to them about, right? Like it's not going to be a big deal, and you're going to remember like, oh, this is the per oh, I haven't talked to that person in a while. I need to call them. Pretty soon, you're going to start accumulating more and more people, and your database is going to grow if you're doing this all correctly. And when you have a thousand people in your database. You're not going to remember what I don't remember what I said to people a week ago sometimes like and it's kind of embarrassing because like I just had the conversation with them and they're like oh don't, wait don't you remember like we you said we're well, I, I've spoken to like 500 people in the in that in that span of time right so you want to keep track of your notes I promise you you will not remember nearly as much as you think you are going to uh, a couple of weeks later when the next time you're supposed to call them and follow up with them so you take notes of all that because to remind, remind yourself so you have a more, a better conversation the next time you talk. It's also there to remind you of when to call people and keeping you organized, right? Someone says to you like, oh, you know, hey, Ed, oh my God, you have our property, that, that $4 million property, you know, I probably wouldn't remember that one. Let's say the, the million dollar property in Torrance. Yeah, we're going to sell that one, but it's not for like a few years. Dude, I will totally like not remember that six months from now to stay in touch with that person, right? So all those things you want to set yourself reminders of when, when is the next time I should be calling them and talking to them, right? These are all things you do with your CRM. Yes. I, I cannot tell you how many times I have set people up in my database and I, I'm good at touching everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I call them and they just don't call me back. stuff um command so it's a place where you can run ads directly through it you can create ads in facebook instagram google pay-per-click you can do it all through command there's templates there that you can utilize so it has some graphic design capability to it uh whether you guys know it or not you guys all have a website available to you for free it's part of what we include as keller williams that's available to you you you, you create that through command uh the, the external website that your clients can go to 
There is an app that your clients can download where they can search for properties all around America, all around the world. And when they find a property and favorite it or send it to somebody, you get notified. So you, it's a great way of staying in touch with them. So they have a, there's an app that your clients can get. You have a separate app that's for you, the real estate agent, where you can access everything on the go. So when, like, let's say you go to the DMV, which means you're going to be in line for like two hours, you can make a bunch of calls right there on going through your command database, and it's all done right through command, all through the app on your phone. So right? Ed, when are they going to learn all the tools? Is that part of Ignite now? Mm -hmm. That when you go and say, okay, today's going to talk about the app, we're going to talk about adding a new. That's part of. Ignite we're going to we're going to cover it at a high level. I don't know. I haven't looked through all the new Ignite. I've only looked at the, the first few ones that I'm teaching. Um, so I don't know how much of it is in Ignite, but we will make sure that you guys are all, all trained on all those things. A um, couple of things, if you want to learn command at a higher level, uh, there is a class that's offered every day by, uh, it's online, which is why no one ever knows about it, because if you have to see it on the calendar and go to, but, but Scott Leroy teaches a good one every day, and he kind of rotates through about 30 different topics. So like, if you go to, like, he'll teach you how to do an ad one day, and one day it'll all be about you know, how to use the graphic design part of it, or, you know, so take a look at that. That's every day Scott Leroy is doing something on command, teaching you guys how to do it. Is it also on YouTube if they want to go back? That's a good question. I'm not 100% sure if the old ones are on YouTube. Yes. Oh, he does? Oh. Well, there you go. Thanks. Awesome, Richard. See? So Scott, Scott Leroy Marketing Command website. So if you go Scott Leroy, and his name is um, S C O T T L E R O Y. So go to YouTube, and then he's kind of like a third party that helps KW, the whole world of KW, with their marketing. And there's so much with command. You can go and say Scott Leroy Marketing uh, Command database input whatever and and kw also has the videos so you guys are so lucky to have this tool how much did um gary keller and our three thousand dollars a year they spend on this they're selling they're spending one billion with a b one billion dollars developing all this that's pretty cool so you have you have your database you have ways to market you have ways to do print marketing, do all the things in one spot if you so choose to use it. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing in other places, third party over the course of 20 years for my business, and how it's all from, all there for you guys for free. So um, just save some money. Yeah. Lead with revenue, and this is one great way to do it. I used to have a Chime CRM. I used to spend $500 a month, every month, on my Chime system. All right, um, so you, we talked about the app, the command app, and then your, your client's uh, consumer app. Um, let's look at some numbers. These are the numbers. I just updated this this morning. These are our numbers for this market center. Uh, little history about this market center. This market center has been around for a long time. It's been around for, I think, 17 years total, uh, which is pretty old for a KW market center. Um, it's had a long history. It was super, super uh, popular and, and profitable. Uh, about seven or eight years ago. And then it had a bit of a lull where it was still did fine, but it just wasn't growing as fast for uh, like a few years back. And then they brought Simon back a few years back and then they brought me in about a year and a half ago. And we've been on a mad tear, like we're like crushing it. Um, this office is growing quickly. I don't know if you've noticed how many people are coming, you know, have been joining uh, monthly, but it's, it's pretty neat to be a part of. And, uh, and as a result, our financial numbers are, are growing pretty quickly too. Month over month, uh, pick your number, but let's just go with GCI, right? That's how much agents are totally are making. We're up 116%, so month over month. That's not a 16% growth, that's 116% growth. It means we're more than double what we did in March of last year. Year to date, we're up 31.8%, 31, 31 so that's good. Like uh, all of our numbers are positive, that's, that's good. It means we have a nice healthy market center. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff happening. It's a great time to be a new agent too, by the way. Why do I say that? Because we're entering into a shift. Uh, interest rates are going up. Um, I don't think it's going to be drastic like 2008, 2009, but uh, 
shifts are when the market shifts, right? Sometimes the market slows down, sometimes it heats up, uh, things happen, and we're definitely going into a shift. Like, we're not sure exactly what that means, but uh, when you go from having two and a half percent to five percent interest or whatever, six percent now, whatever the hell we're at now, uh, that's going to have an effect on the market. Um, I will tell you, is that a good thing or bad thing? It doesn't matter. It's they're all good markets. There's no bad market. They're just markets, and every market has its way of how do you attack it, how do you take advantage of the changes that are going on. One thing that's great is whenever markets shift, especially when they go from being super super red hot to slowing down, which is we'll probably gonna experience some of that. Um, it also tends to shuffle up the hierarchy of agents in the market center, right? I started in business in 2010, which was like the worst time in history to be a real estate agent. And everyone's like, I can't believe we're getting started. Now, I didn't know any better. I was naive and dumb. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. I just decided to become a real estate agent. Um, however, in retrospect, it was a fantastic time to start as an agent because so many people were leaving the industry and being like, I'm, I'm quitting, I'm retiring early, I'm done. And it left me a lot of people to bring in as clients who, who weren't attached because that person had just left or whatever, right? There's some of that that's happening now combined that the shift in the market combined with the fact that a lot of, uh, there was a big spike, the baby boom generation was a big spike in population. A lot of them are reaching retirement age. I do a lot of recruiting as you guys know, and I will tell you from experience, there's a lot of people in the South Bay who are getting towards where they're not really interested in doing much real estate anymore. And that's, that spells opportunity in many ways for you guys. So great time to be getting in the business. Um, and uh, I would say great office too, not, not to toot my own. Um, here's our office. Uh, I didn't list some of this stuff. We, have, we do have our own mission and values. Uh, contributions for KW Cares. Uh, uh, if you're interested in making a contribution, um, you know, typically people like do you like, hey, I'll, you know, I'm just going to contribute $5 out of every deal. 2KW Cares, totally cool. Totally optional, by the way, you don't have to do any of this, um, but that you can talk to uh, Natalie if you're interested in that. Let's say, where's Natalie's name on there? Okay. She's not a, oh my God, did I, I, I'm so sorry. Natalie Pye is like, first of all, she should, she should be up here way before. She is everything. She should be up there way, way before my name, I'll tell you that. Like, if, I tell this all the time when I'm throwing people, I was like, if I got hit by a car tomorrow and died suddenly, like the office would miss me. Like they'd probably like you know miss me for a month or two, dude. If Natalie, get, if Natalie, sometimes Natalie, this this whole place is going to just to, just going to shit. You know? um, so yeah. So Natalie is our, our love operations. Right now, Natalie. Yeah, we, we love you, Natalie. Yeah. Um, so uh, they usually told me I'm, I'm their biggest star, uh, referring to me as co-team leader, which is kind of cool. Uh, whatever. That's all. Whatever. Simon and I work great right together. Jennifer Kucher and Manny Atias. You guys don't know this, but they're rock stars. They're known throughout the area. Uh, they're super, super cool people and very visionary. We had concierge in our region more, it's coming to all of KW, but we've had it for like two years. And that is solely because many like made it happen. So some cool stuff there. Uh, Holland, you know, she, she's at the front desk. She's our director of agent services. She's a rock star. Uh, there's our ALC. And I think there's probably some people on here that I don't have on here. Um, I just did everyone off, my, off the top of my head this morning. Uh, Gary Nix, Fred Howard, Michelle Brown, um, great people there. Everybody know what the ALC is? Everybody, anybody not know what the ALC is? Agent Leadership Council. This is super cool. This is a KW thing, part of our culture. So we have a leadership council. Some of our top agents participate and they form what's called our, our ALC, our leadership council. For being part of the ALC, they get a few cool perks. Sometimes we have like, like we had a retreat that was just for them in March. That was cool. Um, however, it's also some responsibility. We look to them to head some of our, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, I want to say panels, but uh, committees that give guidance to the office. For example, like we have an education committee that helps guide us on what classes should we be offering, right? You may not know this, but uh, Keller Williams at large also has an international ALC, an IALC. And uh, before Gary wants to make a major change with KW, he has to go and get permission from the IALC. Uh, we had someone from our office, I think, who used to be part of the IALC. Do, do you know, Maureen, do, do you know that? If, if we, someone from, the, didn't we have Michelle, Michelle was always part of the IALC. Oh, there you go. There you go. She's a rock star. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so, so that's really cool. Like right now, Gary's on a mission to, uh, it's a long story. So they're making a change of profit share. And he can't just like say, this is what I want to happen. Even though it's a private company, he can't do it. It's part of the, the his agreement is that before he makes a change, he has to get permission. So what does he have to do? He has to go and do some politicking and, and get the votes to make sure that they can pass this thing. But it won't happen if, if they say we can't pass it, right? So I think that's really cool. And I don't know of any other company in the world that I know of that does that. I mean, there's probably are, but I don't, I don't know of any. So that's neat. Um, profit share. Uh, I love it. But we're not going to cover that because I got to cover something else really quick. Uh, KW is not just a Keller Williams real estate. We now have a mortgage company. We have Keller Manage, which is all about property management. We have Keller Covered, which is not really an insurance company, at least not yet. It helps your clients find uh, insurance quotes. Keller Offers, which will help if you have somebody who wants to sell their house in a hurry and they just want a cash offer, you can point them to Keller Offers. The advantage to you is that at some point Keller Offers is then gonna sell the home and you get to keep the listing. So it's better for you than if they go to Open Door or one of these places that gives them cash, right? Um, there's lots to this. We have all these different communities, we call them. Uh, sports and entertainment, commercial, land. You were talking about commercial earlier. Uh, uh, we have a, a division for that. Um, all these things, these are all things that you can get involved in, which are kind of like niche markets, right? All right. Wow, I got five minutes to do this part, which usually takes a little longer. I can see why they say that this first class should take longer. Um, I don't want to rush. You know, we've got time tomorrow. So let's do this. All right, we're going to start this. We may have to finish this part tomorrow. Oh, you know what? We are going to skip this part because I want to talk about what you should be doing tomorrow during the daily success system tracker. So by the way, who, who plans on coming in here tomorrow from nine to 11 and working from here at the office? Anybody? Yeah, I will. Sure. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. I'll try to stop by here as well and see if I can uh, cheer you guys on and take part. Uh, so let me skip ahead. This is what we recommend you do uh, with, with every day for your daily success system. Oh, that, that's funny. I have a tracker. Where is this? I have to find the tracker. And it's probably in your... Uh, I imagine it's in the uh, uh, the participant guide. So what we recommend, a secret of success, which you, you can start tomorrow, but you're going to want to do this for the rest of your career. Have 10 conversations with 10 people. You're going to add 10 contacts to your database, right? So if you want to start using command, add 10 people every day to command. Uh, for now, though, and I would recommend doing that. So if you don't know how to access that or whatever, I can send you guys, shoot me an email and I'll send you all a link on, on how to access adding people to your command database. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, 10, 10 handwritten notes. Utilize the 1051 model for social media engagement. We're gonna talk about that later. And the other thing they talk about too, which is not mentioned here, they took it away apparently, is preview 10 properties. Now you don't have to do it in person, but just say there's an area you want to start becoming, figure out one part of town that you want to become an expert in. Maybe it's the Redondo Beach sand section. Your, your eyes are, you know, you're, you're getting opt uh, optimistic and you're like wanting to go for the big numbers. Maybe it's Torrent, the west side of Torrance. Maybe it's Carson. Maybe it's San Pedro. Wherever it is, figure out where do you want to become an expert. You can't you can't tackle it. Los Angeles is a very large place. You are never going to become an expert in all of Los Angeles. But figure out where can you become an expert. When I moved to town from the East Coast, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna my I'm gonna plant my flag in North Redondo. North Redondo 90278 is gonna be my hood. I'm going to know everything that happens in 90278. I could tell you, I go on this for like an hour, but I, I, I made it my point. I knew everything, everything that would happen in 90278 was like my turf, right? So I would preview every home, everything that came on the market, I was the first one there to go look at it, relatively. Um, I did a lot of cold calling through that neighborhood and I, 
uh, well, we don't have to go into all that, but I just wanted to become an expert in one part of town. And then in the office that I was working at at the time, anytime anybody had a listing or something and they would, I was just, no, I just started becoming known as the expert in North Redondo. So, you know, all these people in my office would be like, oh man, hey, I got this listing coming up. What do you think of this price? And I say, oh, that's, I, you know, I think you should come down, whatever, up, down, whatever I would say. And I'd say, by the way, I've got like three buyers that are looking for something just because I would know everybody in the, you start becoming an expert. Everyone starts telling you everything about that little piece of, you know, it could be a geographic niche. It could be a, a, a certain building, like a certain neighborhood. Uh, maybe you're the an expert in the villages in, in South Redondo, right? But on the water there, just figure out something that you want to become an expert in and start learning, start going through the MLS and learning all about that neighborhood, right? Uh, we should, you should set up a hot sheet for that neighborhood uh, in the MLS. Don't have time to go into that today, but hot sheet is kind of like a little notice. It's a little daily alert that says, hey, here's everything that's happened in your section of that you're trying to become an expert in over the last 24, 48 hours, right? These people lowered their price. This one's now under contract. That one's sold. Here's one that's new on the market. All that stuff gets notified in the hot sheet, right? But especially the 10 conversations. Brokers yeah. Brokers opens, have you guys heard of brokers opens? No. So brokers opens is, is sometimes an opportunity. Um, different markets have different times. So like San Pedro was 11 to one on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Yeah. TV is 11 to one on Tuesdays. Uh, North Redondo is Thursdays from 12 to two. Manhattan and Hermosa are Fridays. So, that's a great way, number one, to meet listing agents. And you don't need to tell me your name, just say hi. Hi, Maureen. Congrats on your listing. Tell me what I can't read about it on the MLS and start a dialogue. That's what I would say, because I, I don't want the listing agent, no one doesn't want to regurgitate everything that she's written on the MLS, but they love to tell you how much they know about everything, because listing agents have big egos, and <laughs> especially the pen. Um, but anyway, so you just learn stuff that you wouldn't normally learn. And it's great just to, to be an expert, but I would never miss a broker's open for my first year broker. So, and you can find it, it's usually an hour or two a day and you don't have to make appointments to go inside homes, but you learn a lot more by going to the home than you do by looking at it on your phone. Could not have said it better. That's absolutely right. So again, uh, tomorrow when you spend those two hours from nine to 11, uh, have 10 conversations with people like these can people already who are already in your phone, right? So what I would recommend, like a good way of doing it is I would start, by the way, I would start the morning first thing in the morning by looking at your, just looking at 10 properties, right? So just pick out 10 properties and look at them. Uh, that's a great habit to get into. And then take out your phone, figure out 10 people to call, call those 10 people. And as you're calling them, add them to your database, Right. Uh, and then once they're in your database, have a conversation with them. Uh, we talk about Ford. Anyone know, we're going to go over by, just give me like three minutes to, co to cover this. Anybody know it? Everybody, anybody not know what Ford is? What would I refer to? All good, Jackie. So here we go. Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Ford is, this was such a game changer for me. I love Ford. Ford allows, I'm not, I'm actually, I, I know I come across as being like super, extrovert life of the party kind of person i'm totally not like that like i'm, I'm actually an introvert uh like my wife you know we'll go to some cocktail party and I'm, i end up talking to the same person for she said she tells me all these things that happen at the cocktail oh my god did you see when this happened I'm like no nah, i was jack, jack and i were talking about the dodgers lineup for like literally three hours straight you know that, that kind of thing um ford gives the opportunity for someone like me to talk to anybody anytime about any you know it's the easiest way to start talking to people let me give you an example. I love this example. My kid is like a little baseball nut. He's like every, well, now he's on the same travel team. It doesn't change, but he used to be like on South Bay Pony League. So every, every four months, he was like on a new team. Every six months, right? Every next six months, he's on a new team. So every six months, I got a whole new set of parents up in the stands for me to get to know. And then, which is good because about the time six months is up, I've gotten to meet everybody. I'm ready for my new crowd, right? So what you do is you just sit, sit down next to somebody, right? So whatever, I'm just sitting next down, this guy, Jack, sitting next to me. Hey, Jack, what's going on? How you doing? Hey, I'm Ed. Hey, yeah. Which kid is yours? Oh, that's my kid, Billy, out there. Oh, Billy. Oh, yeah, the one played shortstop. Yeah. I won't mention the fact that he just let a ball go between his legs. I'm like, oh, Billy, a oh, great baseball player. Awesome, man. You must be so proud. 
you know, do you have any other kids? Oh, no, just, you know, Billy. And then he's got a sister. Oh, how old is she? Oh, does she play any sports, whatever. I'm all, I'm all up in this. Oh, yeah, what, what you know, uh, cool stuff. You know, how long you guys been in, in LA? Whatever, you know, we start. Then, and by the way, these don't have to be in order, but, you know, I, funny enough, it actually works really well in this order. And then I say, uh, so, you know, so Jack, hey, man, uh, nice to meet you and all that. So what do you do for work? Oh, I work over at uh, uh, Northrop Grumman. Oh, you do? Oh my God, that's crazy. Good stuff going happening over there. Anything new, interesting you can tell me about? No, I can't tell you. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Okay, cool. Don't tell me anything. Um, many times they will say, by the law of reciprocity, how about you? What do you do? And this is my favorite, but I'm in real estate. I, I, I don't say anything else. I, I don't, because there, because there, do we have a lot of real estates in LA? We have a ton of real estates in LA real estate agents in LA. So he's expect like the minute you say real estate, they're going to be like, you know, dude, you're going to come after me with like 10,000. No wonder why you sat next to me. I like, I don't care. Like, you know, don't give me the pitch, but you don't, you're just like, oh, I'm in real estate. But I said, well, uh, you know, uh, how long has Billy been playing baseball? Cause you know, what's going to come next is like, there's going to be like a, a three or four minute gap. And then he's going to be at some point, some point here in the next five minutes, he's going to say, so how's the market? Oh, I love it. You know, how's the market? Well, well, that depends. You know, why do you ask me? You know, just curious what your home is worth these days, or you guys think about making a move or something? You know, just curious. Like, I'm just asking. Oh, um, yeah, actually, you know, uh, nine times out of ten, I'll just be like, no, we, I'm, you know, I'm just wondering how the market is. Or, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not looking to make a move. Oh, cool. Hey, no problem. Um, what part of town do you guys live in? Um, we're we're over in the tree section or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool. Which part of the tree section? Oh, we're on Oak Street. Or, oh, man, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, I saw that property. I just went sold nearby. You guys made it. Prices are going up like crazy. Uh, which, which, which home is yours on, on Oak Street? Oh, we're 321 Oak Street. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, no, no, no. We've already got an agent. I know. It's all cool, man. Um, uh, cool, man. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, yeah, if you ever want to learn more about what's going on in your neighborhood, let me know. But otherwise, all good. And then I, I will change the subject. I don't want to like, I don't want to beat the hell out of them. Like what Maureen was talking about them. If you, if you start going after them with like, you know, can I, can I send you to see a man? Oh, no, 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 we're watching a baseball game. Like, don't be on like that. It's to let this happen. It will happen naturally if you let it, right? If you show them like, hey man, I, I'm in real estate. I'm happy to talk about it. And I'm watching my kid play baseball. And I know you are too. So I'm not going to like be a jerk about it like most people would, by the way, I'm not going to just start handing you my card right now. But what you can do is so then I ask him about there. So, you know, what else do you guys do for fun? You know, I see Billy plays baseball. What about your daughter? What does she do? You know, do you guys go skiing? Do you guys surf? Like, what do, what do you guys like to do as a family? What's, what does your recreation look like, right? Have that conversation for a while, whatever we're shooting. I mean, this is all happening over the span of two hours during a game, by the way. This is not like a five minute thing. And then at the end, I'm like, so, you know, uh, Oh, they mentioned skiing. Oh, we, we go up to, uh, to we, we go all the way up to Tahoe. Tahoe, really? That's far. Like, you, you, you know, you must really like it up there. Oh, we love it. I know it's a far drive, but I love Tahoe. Oh, we're, you guys think you'll ever retire and like move up there or something? I don't know. This is all, now we're talking the future. Dreams is anything future related. It could be like far future. Like, where do you want to retire, you know, someday down the road? It could be like, uh, you guys have plans for the summer. That still qualifies as dreams, you know? Uh, is Billy going to go in that, in that summer thing that's the summer camp for baseball, right? Or you guys have plans? Are you guys going to go out of town, Hawaii? What, what, what's your deal? What do you guys like to do? Whatever. Now, over the span, this has been like two hours. We've gotten to know each other. It's been good. Now, on Monday, maybe I just send him something like, uh, I could send him an article about something going on with Manhattan Beach properties or whatever, something regarding his neighborhood. Uh, I could send him just a couple listings like, hey, man, just thought you might like, to by the way, I've got his contact information because it's easy enough to find out through the baseball. I've got his email and his phone number. I don't want to abuse it, but I could just mail him something and just say like, hey, man, uh, it's Ed. We had so great to meet you at the baseball game. Uh, here's, uh, here's some information on whatever your neighborhood. Here's a couple properties that sold nearby you. I thought you might like to learn about whatever. If I can ever help, let me know. Right. Not a big deal about it. By the way, I could send him a book. That could be cool too. If like, if we were talking about something, I do this all the time. Like if I'm talking to somebody and we have, we start talking about some really interesting thing. Oftentimes it'll remind me of a book because I do a lot of reading. Um, I'll be like, oh my God, that reminds me. Did you ever read that book? Blah, blah, blah. No, I've, I've heard about that, but I've never read it. I'll just send him a copy of it. Like whatever, Amazon, I got his address, send it to him. 
like, you know, and, I, and I'll totally blow it off. Next time I see him at a practice, you're like, oh my God, Ed, I saw the book, man. You totally did not to do it. I was like, dude, it's all, there, it's all cool, man. I just love the book. And so I just, let me know what you think of it, right? Um, and now this is all happening organically. And I've got him, like, we're, we're, we're on the way to that conversation, right? Does that kind of make sense to you guys? Do you see how that works? That's what Ford is all about. On a, on a micro level, you guys are going to use this on your phone calls when you call your, your, your people, you, some people who you maybe haven't spoken to in a couple, you know, six months or so. Hey, what's going on, Jackie? What's going on? How's, how are things that so, like, you know, how's the, how's the family going? Oh, it's good. Your family's great. Cool. How, how's, uh, how's things at SoFi Stadium? How's FedEx? Whatever it is. Oh, what? You're in real estate? Yeah, that's awesome. Whatever it is, right? Um, so, we, you know, you can go through all of this uh, on your calls. And in the middle of this, in between here, if you go in order, and not that you have to, you can jump around. But in here is a good time to, to insert a little bit of business. So when they ask you, you ask them about their business, even if they don't ask you, be like, hey, part of what I was calling, I just want to let you know, I just got my, you know, I, I just joined Keller Williams' office and I'm super stoked or whatever, whatever you want to tell them, something real estate. Hey, I just want to let you know, I don't know if you knew this, but I'm in real estate now. I've been doing it for a couple of years and, I, and interest rates just shot up a bunch. So if you guys have any plans, do you want to learn how this is going to affect you or your home price? Just let me know. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Do not... Hear me out. One thing about Ford is you're going to put some business into there somewhere. Do not do it here. Do not end on business. Think about this. And I, I know we're going over time. We're, I'm going to wrap you up here. We're last minute, I promise. If I have a conversation with Jackie, I'm like, Jackie, how's it going? How's your family? How's your kids? Blah, 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 blah. We're talking. And at the end of it, I'm like, by the way, I just want to let you know that I'm in real estate. And if you ever had it, she's going to be like, oh, man, I'm like, that was, it kind of feels gross. But if I mention business and then I come back to, well, anyways, enough about that. Tell you, you, you guys have plans for the summer and we have some fun talking about that. Way different vibe. Yeah. Way different vibe. It, sh it shows them I'm not, yeah. Yes, I'm calling you about business, but I also care about you as a person. And I'm just generally, I like talking to you and I'm just, you know, we're having some fun chatting, right? This may never lead to business and that's totally cool. I, I still enjoy calling you, right? Everybody following that whole Ford concept? We also call it, it's also sometimes referred to as a Ford sandwich because of the neat little thing with the meat in the middle, right? Um, any questions about that? I'm sure Maureen could talk about this for a while. Well, I just wanted to mention one thing, probably in my course of my career, whether it's been an agent referral or a buyer referral, or just doing that at my doctor's appointment in Colorado, her mother has to sell a property and they're concerned about capital gains. And I said, well, you understand about Prop 19, don't you? And she's like, what's Prop 19? And it talks about inheritance. So learn all the propositions that have to do with real estate. Very helpful. It's that an area where people really dig very deeply and you just giving them information. And um, we just got like $3 million worth of property to sell in Irvine. And, because, you know, even though I'm, I'm probably not going to be that listing huge when I'm coming to her, I'm living in Colorado, but, you know, giving them the information, she can't, you know, handle this, but I probably made over six figures in referrals, and all I did was pick up the phone in my little career, and maybe more, I've never, I've made 20000 this year in referrals alone, and, and you just never know, and... We have, you know, we have a tremendous networking. You have agents. We probably have agents in Ukraine right now. We do. Um, we have, we're an international company and there's, we went over really quickly here, but in the white pages, you can find an agent in any area and, and you see their bio. So it's, it's just family, friends, and especially right now, there's a grand exodus going out of Colorado, California. Yeah. Um, you can always set some people up and, you know, a lot of nice ways to make passive income with this company. So. All right, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Jackie, do you have one last question before we go? Yeah. Quickly, Jackie, about chocolate. You mentioned that there's going to be coaching and mentoring classes on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday at 1.30. I'm not going to be able to make that. Is there another opportunity? Yep. So uh, Wednesday at 1.30 is going to be hybrid. It's going to be in person in this room and also uh, on Zoom. And if you can't make it, we're going to have it recorded and, uh, and we can go over it on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't make it, just watch the recording of it. Because on, on this Wednesday, we're just going to cover what is the new, what is the, the modifications to the coaching program? What does that look like? Because uh, everybody's going to get a mentor and a, and a coach, 
right? Uh, we'll talk about what that, why, like what is the difference and what, how do they work together as well as who are the mentors that are available. I'm gonna be the coach temporarily just for the next month or two while we, while we get another full-time coach on, um, which I'm kind of looking forward to because I haven't done it for, for a couple of years. So it's gonna be fun, like working with people. All right, guys, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Any last questions? I think we're all good to go, right? We're all good to go? Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you.